So topic number one in advanced financial management, this is the approach that I've used over the years is the cost of capital. Cost of capital is um, relevant to a number of areas. This course that we're doing has got two main components. The first component is related to investments or investment decisions and financing decisions. And the major areas are cost of capital, investment appraisal, measures and acquisitions. Those are the core areas, investment appraisal, business valuations and cost of capital. Cost of capital, we use it in your investment appraisal. Cost of capital, you need it in your measures and acquisitions. So it forms a foundation. After you finish that area, what is the next part of the course is risk management. The currency risk and interest rate risk. So now let us go to the cost of capital. So I've sent you some notes on cost of debt and cost of equity, which are going to act as a guide for us. I've sent you some notes. These notes are there as a reference for us as we run through this particular topic. So our question said, calculate the cost of equity. The question that you are looking at says calculate the cost of equity. So how do we calculate the cost of equity? On this paper to calculate the cost of equity, mainly we are going to use the capital asset pricing model. And some situations we may have to use uh, the M and M theory. So in advanced cost of equity, The two main items is your ability to manipulate the CAPM and also the M and M theory for the purpose of estimating the cost of equity. The dividend valuation model, not so much for this course. Calculating the cost of equity using the dividend valuation model not so much for this course. By and large, for this course, what are you going to use? We're going to use your capital asset pricing model, where the cost of equity is given as the risk-free plus the beta factor, brackets, market return minus, so that's the formula that we are going to use by and large. By and large, that's the formula that you are going to use to estimate your cost of equity. Now, what we're going to do throughout our program is we're not going to use our textbook questions or examples, no. We're going to use past exam papers to learn the principles. Yeah, otherwise, if we use simple textbook questions, then you go to the past papers, that's like duplicating the effort. Why don't you apply your effort on uh, the type of questions that you expected to use? So, uh,
This item here has got a terminology. This item here has got a terminology. Mm -hmm. This is normally given and is called the equity risky premium. So this is what we call the equity risk premium. This RM minus RF, we call it the equity risk premium. So in your questions, when they say equity risk premium, just know that they've already done the subtractions for you. You don't have to subtract them yet. And that's exactly what you're going to do. So can we all get ready? Let's get ready. And uh, from where to go, I want you to build your spreadsheets. From where to go, start working with your spreadsheets. Start building spreadsheets so that you become used. You become used in answering the questions using the spreadsheets. So let's go to our question. Let's go to our question. So the question that we have here says, estimate the company's cost of equity. So that's the first item we want to learn, cost of equity. And we just highlighted to you. Now, if you look at our question here, if you look at our question here, it's got direction. It's talking about the current risk free, 3.8. It's talking about the market risk premium being 7%. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that to calculate the cost of uh, equity, we have to use the capital asset price model. Now, what is it that is missing? I'm sure some of you are able to see that where is the beta? Here we are, the company's equity beta is estimated to be 1.2. The company's equity beta is estimated to be 1.2. So what does that mean? This means that before any proposed change, You've got enough details to calculate the company's current cost of equity. So the current cost of equity can be calculated. Are we together, team? Yes. Yes, yes, we are. Yes. yes. So now, let us all proceed with our very first computation. Let all of us proceed with our very first computation. Okay. So in our very, very first computation, We will go 
we're going to cut in and paste the details that we need. What details do we need? We need these details here. So we'll say, we need the details here. So these are the details that we need. So where is my image? Okay, there we are. So with all the information that we need, with all the information that we need, The information that we need is all here. So we've got uh, the risk free 3.8, the beta 1.2, the equity risk premium given here. So let's go, let's pick these items. The risk free 3.8, that is what we have here. The beta 1.2, that is what we have here. The premium, the equity risk premium seven, that's what we have here. So the cost of equity is coming to 12.2%. Please, can you confirm that? Can you confirm that? That your cost of equity is 12.2. So we are looking at the first part of the question before any changes take place. before any changes take place. This is not the only way of presenting this answer, no. There are different alternative ways of presenting this answer. So I don't want to insist that's the only way, no. Uh, in the exam, you may not need to put what we have put here, like talking about the approach, may not be necessary. In the exam, probably what you need is that, the cost of equity. And then from there, putting in, if you, once you put in that, and then in this cell, you put the full computation, which gives you 12.2, that is okay. In other words, there may be no need of repeating this in the exam. Meaning what? Meaning that one can just come here and say equals uh, 3.8 plus open bracket uh, one2 
1.2 by 7. One might as well do what I've done here. When the marker comes, you put his case there and you find all these. So in other words, in an exam situation, we may not need to include this. We may not need to include this. Just this and probably highlighting the variables for ease of reference to get that is what we need. Okay, so that's our lesson number one how to find the cost of equity using the CAPM. And here we're looking at the current situation. That's a current situation. Now, we're going to move into the cost of debt computation. We're going to move into cost of debt. Why? Let's revisit our question again. Let's revisit our question again. When we revisit this question, the question says, Calculate the cost of capital. What do they mean by cost of capital? They're referring to weighted average cost of capital. Now, if you have calculated the cost of equity, you have your cost of equity. What is remaining is the cost of date. Now, how do we calculate the cost of date? How do we calculate the cost of date? And that is what we want to learn now. That is what we want to learn. So we're going to break this recording at this point in time. <laughs>